Welcome to your Bobby List Today Evening News Updates for Tuesday, March 12. Thanks for joining us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. The European Union blacklists Barbados as well as a number of other Caribbean countries as non-cooperative tax jurisdictions. The EU said it moved Barbados to the grey list after it made commitments when the first blacklist was adopted in 2017, but it had now blacklisted it for failing to follow up. Belize, Bermuda, Dominica, Aruba and other countries were also moved from the grey list to the blacklist for the same reason. It said five countries, including Trinidad and Tobago and the United States Virgin Islands, have taken no commitments since the first blacklist was adopted. Meantime, leader of the Democratic Labour Party, Vola de Pisa, says the EU blacklist spells impending disaster for the country's second highest foreign exchange earner. The political leader says it also shows yet another example that the government does not know what it is doing. In a post on the BLP's Facebook page, De Pisa argued that under the current regime, Barbados failed to implement commitments made to the European Union by the agreed deadline, despite having lowered cooperation taxes for local businesses with the explanation that they were complying with EU edits. Now, news of the blacklist came as debates got on the way in the Parliament today on the proceeds and instrumentalities of Crime Bill 2019. In Lady Dove debate, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Dale Marshall described the bill as a vital one in the country's fight and suppression of criminal activity. This bill, proceeds of crime and instrumentalities, or as it's probably called, proceeds and instrumentalities of crime, is intended, Mr. Speaker, to strike at essentially those assets that are in the possession of the criminal element of our country, where those assets are either themselves the proceeds of crime or are intended or have been used in the commission of crime or in, or in unlawful conduct. Marshall told the House that the previous bill was limited in its scope as it only covered property being confiscated from proceeds of drugs and terrorism. Today's landscape is very different, sir. Today, the individuals who will earn their keep by laundering money, who will earn their keep by selling guns, who will earn their keep by being involved in human trafficking. So the point is, sir, a society has to ask itself, why drug offenses and terrorism offenses and no further? Are the other forms of criminality somehow um, to be more favorably looked on by our society? Should we only tackle the fellas peddling cocaine, but the individuals who have their racket of stealing cars and selling the cars and the parts, somehow or another we shouldn't look at those? So let us face it. There can be little or no justification for maintaining on our books a statute that was so limited in scope that it only covered a small percentage of the criminal activity. Opposition leader Bishop Joseph Averly supported the bill but said perceived bias has to be removed from police investigations and prosecutions if corruption is to be stamped out in Barbados. He charged that not all persons will be treated equally. This measure, as seen by many, is a very important way of dismantling organized criminal networks, interrupting the flows of the capital that drive that criminal activity. But I want to suggest in Barbados here in this context, and I, I've said this before, I say it again, I will not raise my voice, but I will say it repeatedly. 
and they would hope that it catches the relevant and necessary ears. We have to remove the apparent existing or existent bias with reference to investigations and prosecutions in Barbados. There is a real perception that depending on who you are, you will not be fully and properly investigated, if at all. Obesity is worrying for Barbadians. A just-released poll has found that 84% of Barbadians are very concerned about the issue in general. And the worry climbed by 88% when it comes to children. The poll was conducted by the Caribbean Development Research Services between last November and December and covered the island's 30 constituencies. Cadre's representative, Corey Sandiford, sums up the findings. We have strong support from national guidelines for the healthy school food environment, that's important. Strong support for restricting unhealthy food advertising and marketing. Strong support for food and frontal package warning of food and beverage packages. And the majority of Barbadians, as the centerpiece, believe that the government should play a primary role in attacking, tackling the issue of child obesity. Now, overall, high levels of concern about the issue. If you look at the survey as a whole and the findings, say that Barbadians are concerned about obesity. They're even more concerned about childhood obesity. They have had policy ideas presented towards, presented for them and they appear ready to act and they believe that government should be key in proceeding forward in that time. Sports now and let's take in some of the scores at the end of today's competition of the Frank Blackman Zone of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletic Championship held at the National Stadium. St. Michael's Schools was leading in the girls with 218.50 points, followed by Springer Memorial with 193.50 points, Queen's College in third place on 173 points, and Combermay fourth on 171.50 points. Among the boys, Combermay was leading the way on 140.50 points, closely followed by Queen's College with 138 points, St. Michael third with 132.50 points and St. Leonard's fourth on 130 points. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from our regional neighbors now, teachers stayed away from the classrooms for the second consecutive day on Tuesday as their bargaining agents, the St. Lucia Teachers Union, awaits a response from the government regarding negotiations for the 2016-2018 period. SLTU President Julian Monroe says the union submitted the proposals to the Alan Shastney government in November 2016 and again in, in August last year. Yet there has still been no response from authorities. So we raise all those issues with them. Colleagues, that was August 14th. To date, we have not gotten one response. They sat, they listened, and listened, and they told us they would get back to us. To me, the more I think of all the sporting and their response, I get something in Creole comes to mind. Is that they listened to us, and then they were saying, I chose up. Teachers have not received a pay upgrade for the last six years. Monroe says educators are frustrated with the current status of negotiations and poor working conditions. It is like speaking with the ministry on those things. You feel at the meeting that you get in somewhere. They engage you. We speak. But after the meeting, that's it. And finally on the international scene, 
UK MPs reject Prime Minister Theresa May's EU withdrawal for a second time. MPs voted down her deal by 391 to 242, a smaller defeat than when they rejected it back in January. The eyes to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. So the nose have it, the nose have it. On a point of order, Mr Speaker, I profoundly regret the decision that this House has taken tonight. I continue to believe that by far the best outcome is that the United Kingdom leaves the European Union in an orderly fashion with a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that the deal we've negotiated is the best and indeed the only deal available. Yeah. Therefore tonight we will table a motion for debate tomorrow to test whether the House supports leaving the European Union without a deal on the 29th of March. Voting against leaving without a deal and for an extension does not solve the problems yeah. we face. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.